To create a circuit board using the UV exposure method, start by printing your circuit design to a transparent film. You will need two copies of your back layer with your traces and pads on it. If you want solar mask on your board, print out two copies of the back layer with only the pads on it. And if you want silk screen on your board, print out two copies of the top layer with only the silk screen on it. A cheaper way to do the silk screen will be with the toner transfer method. Check out how to do this in my tutorial for how to create a PCB using the toner transfer method. But note, if you use this, it has to be mirrored. I like to print out a copy with all layers on it, so I can use it as a reference. Now cut out two copies of the back layer like this. In one of the copies, make a little cutout like this on either side. The copy without cutouts in it should be against the back of the board, like this. Now place your copy with the cutouts behind it, like this. You can now flip it around and tape them together. When the two pieces are taped together, check that the alignment is right on the mark. Now find a piece of raw circuit board that will fit your design. You will need about one centimeter of excess board around the board edge. Now using a piece of very fine sandpaper, start polishing your board until it looks nice and shiny. You are done when you can see all the oxidation has been removed from the board. It should look like this. And now clean with alcohol to remove any dust and oil from the board. Now with the lights turned off, cut a piece of photo resist that will fit your board. In one corner of the photo resist, add a piece of tape to each side. When you pull these apart, you will pull one film off the photo resist. Now press the photo resist firmly on one end of the board, like this. You want to keep tension in the photo resist while pulling it through the laminator. Now your photo resist should be nice and even, but there can be small textures in it like this. Trim off any excess photo resist. And feed your board through the warm laminator multiple times. The board is finished when it's too warm to hold in your hands. Now place your board with the photo resist against the table and let it cool down. Place your circuit design on top of the photo resist. Put a piece of glass on top and put some weight on it. And now place your UV lamp on top. And now expose your board to UV light. If you use an LED array like this, you will need about two and a half minutes. And now when you remove your design, you should be able to see your circuit. But still try to prevent any light from hitting it. Now develop the board in a solution of sodium carbonate, also called natrium carbonate. You want to use 10 grams per 1 liter of water. Place your board in the container and keep the solution moving back and forth over the board. And do remember to remove the film from the photo resist. Once all the photo resist has been removed, clean your board with water and the final result should look like this. To fully harden the photo resist, expose the board to UV light for another two and a half minutes.
To match the board, we use a solution of hydrochloric acid and hydrogen peroxide, mixed with about the same amount of water. Safety glasses, chemical gloves, please. Place your board in the solution. You can use any kind of agent that you like that will dissolve copper. The most popular agent will be ferric chloride. After a little while you should see the copper start to dissolve. Once the etching is done, remove the board from the container and clean it with water. And once your board is cleaned, we can clearly see the benefits of the UV exposure methods. And now clean your board with the acetone. To apply the solder assist, start by feeding your board for a warm laminator multiple times. Remove the matte side of the photo assist by adding two pieces of tape. Attach the photo assist to one end of the board and add a little bit of water to the rest of the board before the board cools down. Feed the board for the laminator multiple times. Now place your board on the table with something dark on top and let it cool down. Prepare your solar mask layer just as you did with the bottom layer. Align your solar mask and tape it down. Use the same method to expose the board as shown the first time. But use an exposure time of 2 minutes this time. Bring back your solution of sodium carbonate and develop the board. Remember to remove the film. And when you see the board is done, leave it in there for about 2 minutes to make sure. Once the board is done, clean it with water and harden it under UV light for at least 15 minutes. Once your board is hardened, Place it in a tin plating solution to plate it with tin. This will prevent oxidation of the copper. When the board is done, remove it and clean with water. And once tinned, your board should look like this. Now we can make the silk screen, just as we made the solder mask on the back side. But I prefer to use the toner transfer method to make the silk screen. Check out my tutorial on the torrent transfer method to see how to do this. And here's the finished board after applying a silk screen. I've cut the board to size and drilled the holes. I think this turned out pretty nice and this is something you can easily do at home.